How do you keep the audience guessing and surprising them with plot twists? The only feature of the two you could apply that to, I think, is restraint in terms of that's it, it's suspense driven in a sense. And there's I wouldn't say a withholding. There's just, you know, letting the audience figure it out for themselves. But I like using negative space and I like uh, leaving things to people's imagination and giving them just enough, you know, like if you show the foot, you can see the rest of the, the person, you know, somehow. And I think it's more, I think it's stronger when you're left to imagine it. Um, I mean, certainly that's true in, in, with restraint, you know, that some violent things happen, but I don't like, I don't really want to show that stuff. Or I think the more graphic you are, the less powerful your film becomes. So does that, does that speak to what you're, what you're asking me? I think so. Yeah. Writing dialogue. What's your approach to writing dialogue? They sometimes will speak as the characters so I can understand their point of view, mainly so I can understand their point of view in the scene. Um, and then occasionally I'll get some nice pieces of dialogue from that. Um, but just to understand the way people talk, understand that um, there's so many different things that have to do with the way a person talks, whether it's where they're from, you know, how they're feeling that day, their weight, you know, all kinds of things, um, stress, you know, sexuality that, that go into it. And, um, but once you know your characters, it just comes, seems effortless. And then the other thing is just remember that don't like, there is nothing more boring than listening to characters explain themselves. Well, maybe that's an approach. I don't know. It's more like what not to do than what to do though. So if a character is in turmoil, don't, don't, don't explain it. Show them going through some kind of an emotional breakdown, but they don't need to verbalize what they're going through. Sometimes they do. Yeah. Sometimes they would. Sometimes we would as people, I don't know, but, um, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it depends on the situation, but I, I found it to be a lot stronger to imply or to let people figure it out. Because it's usually, you know, everyone is kind of on the same page. But um, I mean, how do I show someone in turmoil? I mean, it's like, don't, the last person you're going to feel for is the person that says, oh, I'm in turmoil. You know, it, it's uh, you want to see it, and then you're like, "Oh shit, are you okay?" And and I, I think that that's part of it. You know, when an actor, it's like when an actor holds back emotion, it's it's more powerful than you know seeing seeing them weep or you know get really emotional on camera when they're trying not to. That's what we do in life. Very true. You know, and I think it's it's stronger. How do you get to know your characters? Just I mean, through through time, sometimes. I mean, it depends on the character. Sometimes there's some sort of archetype you're working with. Um, sometimes you're, you're, you're borrowing from life and maybe you're borrowing from a, a few different places. Um, but really, in, in the same way, you get to know the world of the film just by thinking about it, marinating, writing it out, you know, doing whatever your process is. I mean, time has a lot to do with it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, to me, just a natural part of writing anything you know you don't you know very little at first and then and every element reveals itself over the course of time have you ever written a character where you feel like you're you're not dialed in enough to them and then you've totally changed the character or maybe made them a supporting character and not the main one hmm. yeah probably i don't know if it would have been because i was i, I didn't think i knew them well enough um not for that reason, but certainly, you know, they uh, will kind of tell you what their role is to, to some extent. Not sure if I'm answering the question, but um, yeah, they just uh, sometimes, I mean, sometimes they go away entirely, you know, and you have this whole character that you wrote out and you realize this is redundant or superfluous in some way and, or doesn't work or maybe it works for another film. You just have to be really honest about it. 
Do you think that filmmakers or writers should stick to one genre? No, no, I think that's the word. I mean, if that's what you want, yeah, why not? But I think there's a thing where, you know, in recent times of getting relegated to a certain genre because you did that and you did it well and you should, you know, it confuses me that you want to do other things. But I think the great filmmakers, the really great filmmakers work across all genres. And they're, they're you know, Kubrick is a good example. I mean, he can do war, he can do horror, he can do suspense, he can do comedy. Just be the, you know, do it, do it well. Well, what about people who kind of create their own sort of genre or their own style, like Tarantino, you yeah. know, okay, that's very Tarantino-like, this type of scene, this dialogue, whatever, this car driving with this music in the background. Yeah, those, are the, those, those people are the best. The David Lynch's and the, you know, the Quintons of the world. And I'm, I'm glad they're out there. I'm really glad they're out there and I'm glad they're being allowed to do their thing. Yeah. And do you think that if an artist is considered great but then they don't get that accolade from the top of the top that says you are a great artist but somehow the collective thinks that they are? Mm -hmm. What do you think that's about? The collective, the collective what? Meaning moviegoers, cinephiles, artists. But that those artists don't get um, validated at what, like at the Oscar level or things Maybe, like that? Maybe, yeah. I mean, that, I think that's pretty typical. I mean, it happens all the time. I think, you know, again, I, I mean, I guess that's important to some people, you know, how they're perceived and, you know, accolades, things like that. Um, I just, I've never really thought that way. Never really, it's never really been about that for me. I mean, how you can't control how you're perceived anyway. Right. And once you think you, you, you have a handle on that, you really don't. So I say just give that shit up and do your, do your work to the best of your ability. Do you think people have fought against that in you? Like you talked about letting go and, and you're not in things for the accolades. Do you think that that stirs up things in people? Relative to myself? Yeah. No, I mean, anyone who knows me very well knows that I don't really care about that stuff. So, I mean, I appreciate it. Believe me, I appreciate, you know, if anyone has something nice to say or if anyone sees something I've done, which, you know, it's not a lot of people, but if they do and it moves them in some way, that's rewarding enough that it reached somebody. You know, I don't know.